Hey, it's Guilherme and welcome to the third part of our series in creating our first 3D game using the Godot Engine version 3.1. In this video, we're going to create the maze for our game, tweak its visuals and also add a goal for our player to look forward while he's trying to get out of it. Before getting started, let's clean up our scene a little bit and separate our maze from the game scene. To do so, we're going to add a new node to our game node, which is going to be of type spatial. And a spatial node is the father that all of the 3D nodes inherits from. So as you can see, we start with the spatial here, and then we go all the way to the bottom, looking through all of the 3D related nodes that we have available to us instead of Godot. For now, this spatial node is going to serve to us as a container for the other nodes that we're going to have inside of our level, or our maze, if you prefer to call it like that. So let's add it to our scene, rename it to level one, and we're going to drag our ground inside of our level one. And now we're going to save it as a separate scene so we can click on top of it with the right mouse button and save branch as scene. We're going to create a new folder, which is going to be called world. And here we can save this scene as level one. Now to edit this scene, we have to open it. I'm going to click on this icon on the right side of it. And now we're going to go to our level one scene. And just like we have with our player, every modification that we do to this scene is going to be reflected on its instances. Now we can add a grid map to our level one. So I'm going to select the root node and add a new node and search for grid map. Double click on it. And now it has been added to our level one. A grid map is really similar to tile maps that we have on 2D games, but for 3D games. It helps us to place our meshes on a grid manner allowing us to create levels really easily and without much effort. And for the maze that we are going to create for this level, it's almost going to feel like we are playing with Legos. The meshes that we have available to place are going to appear in this menu on the right side of our editor. But as of now, you can see that we don't have anything here. And that is because the grid map is expecting a mesh library that we have not yet assigned to it. Before being able to assign this mesh lib, we first have to create it. So we're going to create a new scene by going to scene and clicking on new scene. It's going to be a 3D scene and we can rename the root node to mesh library. Every new mesh that we add as a child of our root node is going to be converted later on to a mesh that we can use on our grid map. So let's add a new child to our mesh library and it's going to be of type mesh instance because again, this is a mesh library. And we can rename this mesh instance to wall. And now we're going to assign a mesh to it. In this case, it's going to be a cube mesh, but we don't want it to be of this default size. So we're going to configure it by clicking on the cube mesh. We expose a few variables that we can tweak and we are interested in its size. Instead of being two by two by two, we're going to set its size to be four by five by four. And this mesh is going to serve us as building blocks to our mazes. We're also going to change its color. To do so, we have to change the material that we have applied to this mesh. And again, here on the mesh, you can see that we have the property material and we are going to create a new spatial material. And to configure this material, all we have to do is click on top of it. You notice that we have lots and lots of options here and we're not going to go into detail on all of them. This needs a tutorial on itself. But what we are interested in here is the albedo. So you can expand it and change the color to something that pleases your eyes. In my case, it's going to be a dark red. Now we can click out of the material and save our scene. I'm going to save it inside of our world folder. And instead of saving as mesh library.tscn, I'm going to rename it to mesh library scene and click on save. Now there's still one part missing from our mesh library because if we were to use this wall on our game now, our player would be able to pass through it because we haven't assigned to it neither a body or a collision shape. So let's fix this by selecting our wall. And instead of doing the manual process of creating a static body and then creating a collision shape to it, we're going to click on mesh here on the toolbar and click on create convex static body. This is going to add as a child of our mesh instance, a static body and a collision shape to that static body, which has the same shape as our mesh. The aesthetic body, just like our kinematic body, is a physics body, so it interacts with physics, but the aesthetic body is not going to be affected by physics, and it's also not going to move neither by us through code or through the actions of physics. This makes it the perfect fit for something like a wall that is going to stay there and never move in our game. Now we can save our scene, and before being able to use it on our grid map, we have to convert it to a mesh lib, because now it's only a scene. So we can go to scene, Go around the middle until you find convert to. And here we're going to convert this scene to a mesh library. 
we're going to save it under our world folder and I'm going to call it mesh underscore lib and along with the name we also have to give it an extension and in this case it's going to be dot mesh lib and now we can click on save now if you go back to our level and we select our grid map we can go to our world folder and drag and drop our mesh lib on top of our mesh library property of our grid map you can already see that we have a wall appear here because that's the only mesh that we have inside of our mesh lib and if you click on it we can start to place it on our game you'll notice that our grid map is not yet correctly configured because we can place meshes on top of another like so so let's fix that by pressing ctrl z and removing all of the meshes that we've placed and with our grid map selected we are going to go to the cell and here on the size it has to reflect the size of our meshes in this case is 4 by 5 by 4 and now when we try to place our meshes they are perfectly aligned and are not overlapping each other using the grid map is pretty straightforward to place meshes all you have to do is click and if you want you can also click and drag to place several meshes to remove one mesh you can hold the shift button and right click with your mouse button this is going to remove a single mesh or you can click and drag as well and you have probably noticed that we are placing all meshes in the same height so if you want to go up one level you can use the E button on your keyboard this is going to place the tiles one level above and you can press Q to go back one level and if you'd like to find more options regarding the grid map you can always come here on the toolbar on the top right corner where you're going to find more options that you can use while creating your maze before creating your maze it's also worth noting that you can use this menu on the top left corner of your viewport to change your projection from perspective to orthogonal and vice versa and you can also make use of the views to make it easier for you to place your meshes in my case i'm going to use the top view and i'm going to change my projection from perspective to orthogonal this is going to help me place my meshes with much more precision and without having to keep moving my camera while doing so now feel free to create your own maze and i'll be back when i'm done with mine all right now that i'm done creating my maze i'm going to change my projection back to perspective by going to the top left menu and clicking on perspective and while we are here on our level one scene let's add a material to our ground by clicking on it selecting the mesh and adding a new material to it once again it's going to be a spatial material and we can configure it by clicking on it and changing the color on the albedo i'm going to give the ground a nice shade of blue and then we can click out of the material the only missing part of our maze now is a goal for our player to touch when he's done with the maze to create it we are going to select our level one and add a new child node to it which is going to be of type area we can rename this node to go and an area node emits signals whenever something enters its collision shape we're going to see more of signals on the next video but for now let's add a collision shape to our area and also mesh instance so we can see where the end of the maze is with our goal selected i'm going to add a collision shape to it and the shape is going to be a sphere shape we can zoom in to see how it's looking and once again, I'm going to select our goal, add a new child node to it, which is going to be a mesh instance. The mesh is going to be a sphere mesh, and we're going to add a spatial material to it and change its albedo color to something like a pink. Now we can save our goal as a separate scene. So I'm going to save branch as scene inside of our world with the name of goal. And now we can place this goal anywhere inside of our maze. In my case, I'm going to place it right here around the end of the level and I'm going to make sure that the player cannot see it until he goes really close to the goal all right we can save our scene and go back to the game scene and here as you can see our map is already updated with our goal in place what we can do now is take our player and move him somewhere that makes sense instead of our maze in my case it's going to be somewhere around here here's where I want the player to start the maze and if you want we can already play our game and see how it is looking you can see that we are already able to walk around and we cannot go through walls because we added collision shapes to our mesh instances one thing that we can improve though is the fact that our game is currently looking a little bit boring so we can fix that by changing the configuration of our environment now back inside of godot instead of our file system we can look for the default environment.tres this is a resource that we can configure to change how our environment looks inside of our game. 
Now, there are lots of options and configurations that you can tweak here, just like in our materials. But again, this is an extensive topic and we're not going to cover this in this video. And if you'd like, you can play around with the settings. And if you break something, you can always use Ctrl Z to go back one step and have it fixed again. And I also strongly encourage you to do so because what we're doing here has more to do with how we want our game to look and my opinion might be different than yours. But if you want to follow along, feel free to do so. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the background and select our sky. And here I'm going to change its colors under the sky section. And I'm going to add a little bit more hue to our top color. I'm going to close this section. Under adjustments, I'm going to enable and increase the brightness to 1.4 and also the contrast to 1.2. And I'm going to change our tone map from linear to filmic. Now we can save our game and play to see the differences. As you can see, we have brighter colors and our game is already looking better. And to give it a little extra boom, what I'm gonna do is add a directional light to our level. So I'm gonna open the level scene and with our root node selected, I'm going to add a new child node to it, which is going to be of type directional light. There are several types of lights, but this one in specific, as the description already suggests, is like the sun and, and it doesn't matter where you're going to place it in your game. The only thing that matters for this light is its orientation. So I'm going to add it here and you can see that if I bring it up or down, there is no difference. So I'm going to control Z to keep it at the origin and we can play around with its orientation to see the differences that we bring to our game. Once again, you can play around with the orientation of your light until you get something that looks pleasant to you in your eyes. To me, that already looks good and I'm going to press F5 to play our game once again and see the differences. And now, as you can see, we have some light effects going on inside of our game. Feel free to play around with the values of our environment and our light to get different results. But for me, this is already looking okay. So I'm going to see you in the next video where we are going to finish our game. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.